Hello. I am going to tell you a story today. A story of great tragedy and loss and one of beauty and, well, it's Greek mythology. You get the point. Once there was a war between the Trojans and Greeks. And it all began with a famous story known as the Judgment of Paris. Paris was a prince, the son of King Priam of Troy, and he was, for whatever reason, chosen to be the judge of the fairest of three goddesses, Athena, Hera, and Aphrodite. Remember them, Athena, Hera, and Aphrodite. But, in all fairness, it was not a test of who was the most beautiful and graceful but a test of who could bribe the prince the best. Aphrodite, being the goddess of love, promised him a beautiful wife, Helen. Of course, Paris chose Aphrodite and gave her the golden apple, the official award to prove the fairest of the three. But, when Helen, the wife of the Spartan king, was abducted and given to Paris, the Great Trojan War had begun. Toward the end of the Trojan War, the Greeks were struck with an idea. They built a very large hollow wooden horse and made their war camps seem empty and abandoned. The Greeks filled the horse and delivered it to the Trojans, who believed it was a gift from the gods, telling them that they had won the war with the Greeks. They discovered the emptied Greek camps and threw a party. But in the middle of the night, the unsuspecting Trojans were attacked by the Greeks, who popped out of the beastly wooden horse. Troy was destroyed from the inside of her massive, impenetrable walls, out. Odysseus, the general of the Greek army, led the Greeks in their victory of the ten-year war against the Trojans. On his voyage home, which took an additional ten years, Odysseus is plagued by many things, including the nymph Calypso who holds Odysseus captive on an island for eight years as well as his ship getting hit by a violent storm summoned by Poseidon, who was angry toward Odysseus for blinding his son, a Cyclops. Finally, Odysseus lands on an island of humans and not Cyclops or nymphs, and when a poet tells of the Greeks overtaking the Trojans in the Trojan War in song, Odysseus becomes emotional and the king notices. He asks Odysseus to tell them a story, so he tells them everything. After finishing his story, the king gives Odysseus various gifts and sends Odysseus home, to Ithaca. In Ithaca, Athena helps disguise him as an old man and they rendezvous with his son and they plot to get rid of the suitors that have been flocking about Odysseus's wife for the twenty years he has been gone. When he goes home as a visitor, an old beggar, his wife, Penelope, announces that she is going to choose one of the suitors to marry, finally, and says whoever can string Odysseus's bow and shoot an arrow with it through twelve axes will be the one she marries. No one is strong enough and the old man steps up. The suitors are reluctant but eventually let him. He strings it and shoots the arrow through all twelve axes. To make sure that this man is really Odysseus after Athena removes his disguise, Penelope asks one of the servants to bring in their bed. Odysseus claims that is impossible, since the bed is carved out of a tree growing there and the room was built around it. Then, Penelope knows it's Odysseus and, eventually, peace settles in on Odysseus's life again. Now, on to a different topic, the creation of the world. Mother Earth, also known as Gia, and Father Heaven, also known as Aranos, conceived the first beings of life on the planet Earth some of which were great monsters with power like volcanoes and earthquakes and the original powers such as controlling lightning and weather, which were later intercepted by Zeus. Aside from the monsters, Titans were also born via Mother Earth and Father Heaven. Titans are giant and powerful creatures often portrayed as evil, but that is not always the case. Mother Earth was loving and cared for her children, but Father Heaven was mean and cruel. Mother Earth pleaded with her children to rebel against him, but the only one that does is named Cronus, also called Saturn. Later, after becoming ruler of the universe with his sister, Rhea, he was told that his son would overthrow him later in life. So, to keep this from happening, he swallowed his children. Rhea smuggled her sixth child to Crete and tricks Cronus into thinking that a rock wrapped in swaddling clothes is really his child, so he swallows a rock too. 
The son that was smuggled away to Crete was named Zeus and conquers Cronus after making him regurgitate his five siblings. When he rises to power, all the monsters that opposed him are punished. One of the widely known punishments that was given was to a titan named Atlas, who was the brother of Prometheus, where he was forced to forever bear the weight of the world on his back. However, even after this victory Zeus was not safe. Gia, angry that her children had been imprisoned, gave birth to a last offspring, Typhus. Typhus was so fearsome that most of the gods fled. However, Zeus faced the monster and struck him with lightning bolts and killed him. Typhus was buried under Mount Etna in Sicily. Much later a final challenge to Zeus' rule was made by the giants. They went so far as to attempt to invade Mount Olympus, piling mountain upon mountain in an effort to reach the top. But, the gods had grown strong and with the help of Heracles the giants were subdued or killed.